Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. So in this particular video I'm going to be talking about parents evening and what to do when you've got parents evening coming up. Now schools have probably been talking about it because we're coming to the end of our first half term and parents evenings if not this week will definitely be taking place next week. So I know for most parents it's to get it's a chance to go into school and to talk to the teacher to meet the teacher of your children and your new teacher and just to make sure that your child is settled in class and to make sure that they're happy and to make sure they're enjoying their time in school. And I think that's really important and that's that is what it should be for. Um, the most important thing is that your child is happy in their class because children who are not happy don't learn. So that is the most important thing and the key question to ask when you're going to parents evening is, how's my child settled in class? Are they happy? Um, how are their friendships? Um, how are things on the playground? Um, how's their attitude to their learning? Do they seem like they are enjoying their time in school? Um, however, once those conversations have been had, it's also important to ask a few key questions to help inform you a little bit more about where your child is at with their learning. So um, the best thing to do with when asking these kinds of questions is um, to first consider what year group your child is in, um, because that, that all can... Um, it all depends on that because these discussions would be very different for a parent of a year one child to a parent of a year six child. Um, so the first thing I want to say is um, lower down the school in year one, uh, in key stage one they call it, which is year one and two, um, here are some of the things that you might want to ask the teacher of your, of your children. So first of all, children will be doing phonics in year one and you might want to just ask the teacher um, how are they doing in phonics, how are they doing with their sounds, um, are they learning their sounds? What phonics group are they in? And what sounds are they currently doing? Now, they do have a phonics assessment at the end of year one. So if you get in quick now in this first parents evening and you and your child is not learning sounds or they're finding it difficult, then you can really help support them if you, if you, if you um, pick it up at this point. Um, so how are they getting on with their phonics? What sounds should they know? So the teacher should be able to explain to them the sounds they should know at this point um, that they will have learned in reception. Um, can you get a copy of the sounds that they should be learning? So in most schools, they should send copies home of the sounds and they'll send books home with the sounds in for you to practice with your child at home. But if you don't have these, maybe ask, say to the teacher, can I have a copy of all the sounds they need to know by the end of year one? So even the ones that they've not looked at, you could possibly start to look at at home with your child. But just be aware that the, the phonics is supposed to be taught in a certain way and you don't want to teach your child to mispronounce any of the sounds. So just be aware that if you're going to do that, have a look at some videos online first of how to pronounce the sounds within phonics or ask the teacher what they think uh, the best sounds would be to learn and go over. So that's the year one phonics. Um, also, really important question for depend, no matter what year group your child is going into, what book band is your child currently on? Are they enjoying reading? Do they understand the books that they're reading? And what book band should they be on at this point? Um, and what book band should they be on by the end of year one? So you can keep a track of, of how your child's reading is getting on. It is really good for parents to um, read regularly at home with their child. Every, teachers rec uh, recommend that they read every night. The more practice that you can get in with reading with your child, the better and quicker they will pick up the reading. But you need to know as well, what book band is your child currently on and where do they need to be by the end of that year group? Because um, then it'll give you an idea of how far they've got to go. Other questions you might want to ask are, um, they do certain spellings in year one, they're called the common exception words. So if, you, if you're making notes during this video, then make a note of that common exception words they're called. They can be found online, but do ask the teacher, um, can I get a copy of the common exception words? Some teachers like to give them out on parents' evening, and these will be all the spellings that will be teaching your child over the course of the year, the ones that they will need to know. Okay. So year two then, very much the same to year one. Um, most children will not be doing phonics in year two because they will have passed their phonics screening. But if for some reason, if your child was new to the country um, or for, for whatever reason they missed some of their phonics, then in year two, they may be recapping some of the sounds. So you might want to ask, is my child still learning phonics this year or have they moved on? Um, you may even want to ask them if they if you didn't know already, if they managed to pass their phonics screening at the end of year one. Um, in year two then, it is a SATs year. Um, just for your own information, I think this year will be the final year they do SATs in year two. 
because actually the government is getting rid of SATs after 2023. Um, so this possibly will be the last year they do it. But um, they will need to know a few things. So in maths, coming into year two, they should have learned to count in twos, fives and tens. But in year two, they must know one thing the parents can really help the child with is to know the twos, fives and ten times table. And the teachers will be teaching these throughout the year. But you want to maybe ask, how am my child getting on with their times tables? Um, do I need to do some extra work at home on those? Um, also, year one and two, key stage one, it's all about that, that live learning, living the learning and um, the children having experiences for them to draw on for their writing. OK, so what can you do to help at home? So one thing you can do is ask the teachers, what are their history topics this year? What are their geography topics this year? Is there an overview of the topics and things they'll be covering covering over the course of the year? So if you know that in year two, they're covering Victorians at some point, you could possibly take your child on a on a trip to a Victorian museum. OK, so they get an idea and they can live a little bit more of Victorians. They can bring that back into their classroom and be really engaged with it. You might want to take them if they know their science topic is um, to do with electricity or anything like that. You might want to take them um, to the science museum and, and get them to experience some of those things. And they can bring all of that back into the classroom, that enthusiasm. Um, finally, in year two, what books um, and stories are they going to be doing with their, with their class, with their teacher? Because it might be possible for you to get a copy of that book and then do a little bit more extra reading around that story at home because that will really help your child with their writing. Also, just like in year one, in year two, there are common exception words. Year two, common exception words, words they need to know how to spell at the end of year two. Ask the teacher for a copy of them. They might not have them on the day. They might be able to get you a copy or you can also access them online. Okay, so that's year one and two. What about if your child's going to, uh, is in year three and four? So parents evening for year three and four. Um, at this point, they should no longer be looking at phonics, although in spe specific um, cases, your child might still do a little bit of phonics in year three. Again, if they're new to the country or if they have gaps um, for whatever reason. Um, but at this point, just ask about the spellings again. So just like with year one and two, in year three and four, there are spellings children need to know. And they are called the common exception words. So moving on to maths. Um, you might want to think about uh, looking, asking the teacher about the methods. So um, in year three, um, in year two as well, but in year three, uh, teachers um, teach the children particular methods for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. And if you're anything like me, when you went to school, we all learned the same way. It was that column method where we put the numbers underneath each other. However, teachings come on a bit from since those days and things have changed. Um, and the way they introduce the children to these to, to, to solving these problems is slightly different. So just so you're not confusing the children, um, ask the teacher, OK, I really want to help my child with the maths. What methods do I need to be using? OK, um, can you just show me how you do it? And hopefully the teacher will be able to explain, OK, this is how we teach multiplication. This is how we teach division, addition, subtraction. So you can go home and practice those methods with your child. Again, in year three, um, have a think about uh, book bands. So ask the teacher what book bands they are on. And when it comes to times tables in the year three and four, this is where it gets really important. So in year three and four, they're working towards their multiplication tables assessment, which means in year three, they need to know their three, fours and eights times table. Um, and in year four, they need to know all of them up to 12. Now, it's best to ask the teacher how they're getting on with their times tables. Um, which ones are you teaching at the moment? Uh, which ones? Which one is it best movie to learn uh, with the child at home? And um, can I um, work on all the times tables so I'm ready for that times table assessment at the end of year four? It's so important. It's it's one thing that teachers really um, benefit if the parents can help the child with their times tables. It is so important as they move through school that they know them. You might also want to ask the teacher when the times table test is going to be in the year. It's usually around just after Easter at the start of summer term one. Um, we do have a video on the on the channel if you want to check out that video for more information on the multiplication tables test. Um, moving on then to year five and six. So the business end of the school, um, if your child is in five and six, then they are preparing for their end of key stage two SATs, which will take place at the end of year six. So the kinds of questions you want to be asking at parents evening here are going to be slightly different. So um, for example, 
um, where is my child at the moment in regards to their assessment? So um, are they on track, which would be called expected? Are they below on track, working towards? Are they, um, are they have a chance of getting greater depth in any areas, which is above expected? And if, if so, what can I do to help them? They're going to be assessed in reading, writing and maths. So it's those areas you want to ask about. Um, one area you can really help with is arithmetic. So particularly in year six, they will have been doing assessments around this time of the year just to get a baseline of where the children are. Um, they'll do assessments in reading, writing, maths, not in reading and maths, sorry, not writing. And um, the maths, they'll do arithmetic. So, so a good question that you can ask the teacher is how did they get on in their arithmetic SATs test? Um, what kind of score did they get? Full marks is out of 40. There's no requirement for a child to get 40 marks in order to pass, but they should be getting somewhere between 30 and 40. Now, at this stage, there's a chance they might be getting in the high 20s, but they really need to be pushing to be tw between 30 and 40 marks. So ask the teacher how they got on, if they will tell you what score they got. They won't always um, tell you that information, but more importantly, ask them uh, what questions was my child getting wrong? So which areas were they were they struggling with so then you can help them to possibly practice those questions we have videos on the channel about the arithmetic test so you can watch those videos also they're, they're very useful to see how to answer each question but do try to find out parents evening what areas of the arithmetic test um, is my child needing help with um, finally the reading test so the reading test um, they will have also done in september just to it's a mock test just to see where the children are at the teacher will have done it so ask again the teacher, how did they get on with their reading test um, and what areas within the reading test did they find difficult? So there are certain types of skills and certain types of questions. So word meaning, inference, retrieval. OK, where which skills did my child need help with? Was it retrieval questions? Was it the word meaning questions? It often is the word meaning questions. Um, is it the inference that they need help with? So try to find out what types of questions they need help with. Another name for the types of questions is the content domains. So make a note of that. Um, what content domains are my child struggling with? You can ask that question also. That will be really helpful. Um, finally, um, writing is assessed through teacher assessment. The children will have done a couple of pieces of writing since they started in year six. So ask the teacher, can I have a look at their literacy book? How are they getting on with their writing? Um, is it making sense? Is there anything particular within their writing that they're struggling with? If they have time, you could possibly ask the teacher to just talk you through one of the children's pieces of writing to, to see what they are doing and what they are not doing. Parents' evenings are tight, though, so sometimes the teacher won't have time to do this. You can have a look at the book afterwards. And finally, again, in year five and six, ask the teachers about their history and geography and science topics. Um, what topics are coming up? Is there an overview you can look at? because um, then you can think about taking your children out during the holidays or on weekends um, if you get a chance to just maybe museums um, and places where they can experience things that they're going to be learning about in their topic. Hope you found that video useful, guys. Um, as I said, enjoy the parents' evenings. Yeah, Ask the questions that you want to try and get the information you want. Obviously, the most important thing is that your child is happy in their new class, in their school, and that they're enjoying their learning. OK, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, Please subscribe for more videos on primary education and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.